Sarah from Average Betty here, and I'm making mashed potato pops. Okay, skeptics, I know what you're thinking. Mashed potatoes on a stick? How do you do that? The answer's simple. Magic! Is this your card? Let's make mashed potato pops. I've got a bowl here, and these are a couple of Idaho russets that I've peeled and cooked in the microwave just until tender. This is butter and some salt. You can cook the potatoes on the stovetop too, just like you would if you were making mashed potatoes. This crazy fun idea was developed by Erica of In Erica's Kitchen. There. That looks about right. I'm going to make two different kinds of pops, so I'm dividing the mashed potatoes. Like so. Don't be shy. This is pepper jack cheese. Bacon bits. Get this good and combined. And if you haven't guessed yet, this is going to be a jalapeno popper pop. I know it's tempting to go crazy with the cheese and bacon, but you need a good ratio so your pops stay together. And there. That's about the texture you want. For my next trick, I'm going ballpark style. This is garlic powder, dried parsley, and this is finely grated Parmesan cheese. Mm-hmm. Now to shape them into balls. Here's my jalapeno popper pop mixture. I've got a trusty tablespoon here and I'm filling it just to the top. Don't go crazy with a heaping tablespoon or your pop will be too big to fit in your pie hole. Remember, you shouldn't have to rely on magic to eat the pops. Roll the mixture into a ball. Easy enough, right? Continue doing this until you have all the mixture rolled into balls. I'm going to do the same thing with the garlic parmesan mixture. Idaho russets are really good for this because they have a lower moisture content, so the mixture sticks together well. As you finish rolling each ball, place them on a baking sheet. When you fill up a sheet, you can pop them into the fridge for safekeeping, and it helps to set them up. This is where things get exciting. Here's an egg. Do 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 And these are panko breadcrumbs. This is what you call a breading station. Place the mashed potato balls into the beaten egg and get them good and coated. Transfer the coated mashed potato ball into the breadcrumbs and roll around. The potato ball, not you. And here's a garlic parmesan ball. You can do it. Continue with this until all of your balls are coated. Now for the really fun and dangerous part where I saw myself in half. Okay, just kidding. But I'm sure the haters got excited about that. This is a giant vat of hot oil, people, which can be almost as dangerous as sawing yourself in half. So be careful. I use a kitchen spider to drop the balls into the hot oil. Quick factoid, I'm terrified of spiders, but kitchen spiders? Not so much. Look at this golden brown deliciousness. Directly onto a paper towel and just a sprinkle of salt. And here's my first batch. If you're wondering where the magic is, pipe down, Copperfield. We're about to magically transform our mashed potato balls into mashed potato pops. Hocus Pocus Alakazop, turn these balls into pops. And how good does that look? Abracadang good! Get the mashed potato pops recipe at averagebetty.com and even more potato pop recipes at inericaskitchen.com. I hope you give these mashed potato pops a try. After all, they're as much fun as you can put on a stick without resorting to witchcraft. Find me on Facebook and Twitter and drop by my home at averagebetty.com. Thanks for watching and subscribing. See you next time! Mmm, the magic is delicious.